let us say divide here a gap here in terms of how things uh, need to be uh, probably looked at. Uh, but having said that, I will quickly come back to say that there are certain issues of marginalization, uh, the way society looks at disability, the way uh, cultures talk about disability, in which there are also com commonalities. I am not saying that uh, you know these are two entirely different uh, situations for disabled people and for various of people. Right. Now, the second issue which accrues from the first is that the epistemological formation of disability is also uh, you know, something that we need to look at uh, carefully. So when we talk of the West, when we talk of developed countries, we talk of a certain culture of disability. Okay, and this culture is uh, constructed in terms of the realities of the global north and the developed countries. So disability in Europe, in North America, this is, uh, this is sustained in, uh, as also created by your PhD, a framework of state, legal, economic, and biomedic institutions. Right. Also, the way people are looked at, the way uh, society is formed in terms of, uh, at, you know, what constitutes an individual, what constitutes a family, okay, what notions of citizenship are, uh, what value is lost through impairment, and how these are compensated. All of these create a specific culture of disability, which is again very different when we look at the global south where such infrastructural uh, infrastructure uh, does not exist to the same degree if it exists at all, right? And even if it exists, it exists to a very, very limited uh, degree. So disability as a concept and an identity is not a very clearly defined, not an explicit social construct in the global south. The third thing, you know, uh, that uh, some critics take issue with is that uh, the formulation that disability is a global issue and that its meanings and implications are universal. When you have been looking at various marginalization perspectives like uh, gender, like sexuality, like age, okay, uh, you, you will find that, uh, you know, each location has its own distinctiveness and that leads to a set of experiences which are also very unique. So, uh, you know, I, you, you can see I am not reading this out and uh, not explaining this because this is quite self-explanatory in terms of how people within a location look at themselves, how they position themselves, okay, and how this interrogates notions of commonality about disability experiences across locations that we need to look at very carefully. Now, this is one aspect of the uh, whole debate. The other aspect is, uh, you know, so when we move from the global to the local, to the Indian perspective specifically, we find that the Indian scenario is also incredibly complex, right? So, if you look at the cultural diversity, the religious diversity, the regional variations, the linguistic plurality, okay, all of which characterizes uh, what we broadly refer to as the Indian experience of disability, you will find that there are many streams and substreams within this Indian experience that we need to address very carefully. Okay. Then we also need to take into account the history of the country and how that has uh, impacted issues of disability. So, uh, you know, the ancient Indian civilization, the Mughal rule, then the colonial, uh, you know, regime that came in and what happened post-independence. Each of these historical developments has also contributed to how we look at disability in India. Right. So, uh, when we 
talk of the Indian experience then, we again cannot talk in terms of broad generalities like we uh, cannot talk of disability as a kind of universal construct. Okay, there might be broad commonalities, but we need to get into uh, the specifics that uh, we, we need to take into account when uh, we talk about disability in India from this kind of a disability studies perspective. So each of these uh, diverse realities, uh, as you can see, history, religion, region, language, uh, regional cul uh, cultures, has contributed to shaping ideas about uh, everything, disability included. And if we are to have a kind of comprehensive outlook towards disability in India, we have to do it in terms of these fine nuances and not in broad brushstrokes. So I, I've tried to do a kind of historical survey and for that purpose I have uh, uh, you know, divided ideas, uh, uh, you know, the whole uh, progression of disability perception uh, from this perspective into three broad phases, the pre-colonial phase, the colonial phase, and the post-independence phase of Indian history. <clears throat> so this is uh, something that we have already been talking of at, uh, on and off throughout the two days. So we see ancient Indian texts as a kind of complex repository of ideas about disability. And these uh, are, you know, there are negative ideas, there are also positive ideas. Okay. So if you go right from the beginning, if you are to look at a history okay, of yes. disability perceptions in the country, you would probably begin as, you know, one of the earliest works in the field by Usha Bhatt has done by uh, uh, looking at tribal practices and what these said about disability in uh, their specific experiences. And when you talk of tribal uh, practices, uh, you would also be aware of the multiplicity of tribes and the variations within their outlook towards life in general and disability in particular. Then when you come uh, down in time, you have ancient texts like the Manusmriti, the Charak Samhita, the Puranas, all of which have references to disability and these are again references to disability which, uh, you know, might be negative, might be positive. I am again not going into the details right now, but you know, these can be looked at as a kind of uh, moving forward from tribal practices. Then there is myths, legends and folklores 